This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I fix Dynamesh Swiss cheese and shattering? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have some example model files here loaded in. So the question is asking about some Dynamesh issues that you may run into. So one of these is often referred to as Swiss cheese, and the other one is often referred to as shattering. So to answer this question, I'm just going to demonstrate some workflows that will cause this issue and then show you how you can fix these errors. So to start off, I have the anime head here loaded in. And let's say I'm coming through with the clay buildup brush here and I'm just sculpting on my mesh. So I'm coming across the ear here and just sculpting, you know, doing something like this. And I'm going to read Dynamesh and maybe sculpt some more and read Dynamesh. And as you can see, as I'm redynameshing, I'm starting to get these holes generated on my model. So this is what is often referred to as Dynamesh Swiss cheese. So if you start sculpting in through the surface of your mesh, you're going to create these very slivering areas of geometry. And then when Dynamesh is reprocessed, it's going to look at these thin areas and it's trying to calculate a surface out of them. And oftentimes it will just generate a hole. So you'll end up with something like this on your model. Now, most of the times, this is not going to cause a huge disconnect. It does create some unsightly areas on your mesh, but you should still be able to sculpt everywhere else as needed. Now, occasionally, after you create this Dynamesh uh, Swiss cheese on a certain part of your model, and then you go and you increase your resolution. So let me come over here to the resolution side or here and type in 1024, and now just make a sculptural mark on my model and read Dynamesh, you may end up with something like this. So what has happened here is that since we had that Swiss cheese area on our model, after we Dynamesh now at a higher resolution, ZBrush is seeing the entire mesh as being very thin geometry. And so when the Dynamesh is processed, you're now getting something like this. So at this point, it's not really just holes in your mesh. Your entire mesh kind of looks like this. And so this is not going to allow you to continue sculpting in any shape or form. So how can we resolve this now so that when we Dynamesh again at this resolution, our model doesn't look like this? So I'm just going to undo this quick to get back to the version before I Dynameshed at a resolution of 1024. And the first thing we want to do is we want to fix the Swiss cheese areas. After we remove this area here and we redynamesh, our mesh should go back to looking like normal. So to fix areas that may contain the Swiss cheese effect on your model, you can use the pinch and the inflate brush. So I'm gonna switch to the pinch brush here quick by pressing B on my keyboard, isolating by a letter P and then clicking I. And with the pinch brush selected, I'm just gonna come across the surface here and I'm just going to pinch it. So basically I'm trying to find all those little holes and I'm just trying to ram them all together. And this will create an effect like this. And I'm gonna come across the front and the back and I'm just trying to pinch all those items together. Now, after you've pinched those areas together, you want to give them a little bit of a volume. And to do this, I'm going to use inflate. So I'm going to go back to my brush menu by clicking B on my keyboard. I'm going to isolate by the letter I, and then I'm going to click N, and that's going to select the inflate brush. And now I'm going to come across the surfaces of these thin areas, and I'm just going to inflate them a little bit. So just coming through and applying some inflate, which is going to give those areas a little bit of thickness. Now I can also come back through with pinch again at this stage. So I can hit B, P, I to get back to that pinch brush. Maybe pinch this down a little bit more, pinch this area here. And so you can see alternating between these two brushes, I'm just giving volume to those areas. So I've collapsed those holes so they're all stacked on top of each other. And then I've given a little bit of volume to the surrounding surfaces. Now with this process completed like this, if I now redynamesh by holding control and clicking off my model, You'll see that I've given enough volume to that surface there. The Dynamesh has been applied, and I'm no longer getting that entire mesh Swiss cheese or shattering effect. So I've just resolved those issues. Now I can come back in and sculpt on my model like normal, kind of inflate this area through here. Like so I can all come back in and polish the backside as well. And now anytime after this that I have those Swiss cheese areas removed, if I read Dynamesh, my model should no longer have that issue. So the next item we have that you may run into when using Dynamesh is the shattering effect. So I have another tool here. This is another example file, and it looks something like this. 
So this is created with an array mesh. So I made one piece of geometry using the Z modeler brush, and then I used the array mesh to generate this kind of form like so. So let's say I have something like this, and I want to dynamesh it to make it all in watertight so I could use it for 3D printing. So I'm going to navigate the tool palette over here, go to the geometry tab, come down to the dynamesh area here. I'm going to set my blur down to zero, and I'm going to change my resolution to say 2048, and now I'm going to click Dynamesh. Now you'll see after this processes, I'm now getting this result. So my model is partly Dynameshed, and then I've got this weird shattering happening all along the edges. So when using Dynamesh, you may also run into this occasionally. So this is caused by the amount of geometry islands your mesh contains before you apply the Dynamesh. So if I undo this and get back to my mesh here, I'm gonna come over here and turn on polyframes, and you'll see this is what the geometry of this model looks like. And then if I go down to the polygroups area and open this up and click auto groups, this is gonna go through and it's going to look at all the geometry islands on my mesh and it's going to give them a new polygroup. So if I turn off line here, you can see that these are all the different geometry islands this mesh has. So if your model contains a lot of different little pieces that are creating the surface, when you go to Dynamesh, you may get that shattering effect. So well, I still wanna go through and I still want to Dynamesh this model and I wanna get it so it's all one complete solid watertight form. So how can I go by doing that now? So to do this, you just need to come through and you need to break these polygroups out into different little subtools. Dynamesh each of those subtools and then merge those all together and Dynamesh again. So this process will allow you to decrease the amount of geometry islands. And then each time you decrease the amount of geometry islands and Dynamesh, you're going to get a solid form. Then you can merge that back down, Dynamesh again, and then that will allow you to achieve a full watertight model. So I'm going to go through the steps for this. So I'm going to go to my subtool palette here. And to start off, I'm going to get out of perspective. And I just want to come through and I want to start hiding some of these polygroups. And then I'm going to use the split hidden option to generate new subtools for that. To hide visibility of a polygroup, you can just hold down Control and Shift. And this will give you the select rectangle brush. Then you can click on a polygroup and it will first isolate it. And if you click again, it will hide it. So I'm just going to come through now and just hide some of these polygroups here. So something like that. And for this mesh here, you know, five or six of these different chunks should work pretty well. So I've got those hidden. Now I'm going to go to the subtool palette over here. I'm going to go to the split area and I'm going to click split hidden. It's going to take those parts that I just changed the visibility on and it's going to split it out into its own subtool. So now I'm going to hide that subtool just so I can see my original one here and do that same process again. So control and shift and click to first isolate, hide, 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 hide. And then we're now going to split hidden again. And turn off the visibility on that. Control shift to isolate, hide, 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 hide. Split hidden. Now I'm going to turn off the visibility. Going to first isolate. We'll start down here this time. Hide these portions as well. Get all these guys through here, so something like that. Split hidden again. Go and now do the next part. And so you see I'm just breaking this model, which contained all these individual geometry islands, into separate subtools. So I'm just taking the parts, hiding them quick, and then splitting them off. And this is going to give me the ability to Dynamesh each of these subtools. And since they contain less geometry islands, I'm going to be able to make those watertight, and then I can merge them all together and get my final form. And we'll do all these guys. So that area should look good. So we've now got from the original subtool, we have one, two, three, four, five, six separate subtools here. So now with this, I want to just now apply Dynamesh to each of these individual subtools. So I'm going to go back down to my geometry tab and open that up and go to the Dynamesh area here. I know I want a pretty good amount of resolution for this. So I'm going to change this to say 2048 again, turn off blur, click Dynamesh. You'll see now this has been dynameshed correctly, and now I have one single watertight tool there. I'm going to press down on my keyboard, which is going to select the next subtool. So instead of going to my subtool tab there, I can just press down. I'm going to turn on solo mode as I do this as well. So here's my next subtool, which is broken into a little bit less of those geometry islands. I'm going to change my resolution to 2048, turn off blur, dynamesh that one. So we have another watertight element here. Press down on my keyboard to select the next subtool, change its resolution to 2048, turn off blur, Dynamesh. 
And here's the result I'm getting off that. So you'll notice that I got that shattering effect again. So I have a little too many geometry islands in this mesh for that current resolution. So I'm gonna undo here, and I'm gonna do that process again where I isolate some of these parts out. So I'm gonna hold Control and Shift and isolate this part and this part and this part. We'll just remove three of those. I'm gonna go back to my subtool palette here. I'm gonna do that split hidden again. So I've just created a new subtool from that. So just decreasing the amount of geometry islands again. Now I'm gonna Dynamesh this again. Let's come down here, 2048, blur to zero, Dynamesh. Now this part should complete successfully now. So there we have that part as a watertight mesh. Press down to select that other part. Change my resolution to 2048. Turn down my blur, hit Dynamesh. Go to the next one, 2048, blur, Dynamesh. Go to the next one, 2048, Dynamesh. And then to the last one here, which is this one, change the resolution to 2048, blur, and Dynamesh. So this one had a little bit too many groups as well, so we're just gonna undo that. We're going to isolate a few of these parts here. And then we're gonna split those again. So going back to my subtool palette, split hidden. Go to 2048, turn off blur, Dynamesh. And then now the final one, 2048, blur and Dynamesh. So now I've gone through and we have broken up our original model into multiple subtools. We've now gone through and Dynameshed all the multiple subtools. So you can see my total file count here is at 17 million now. And each of these subtools here has been Dynameshed. So each of these little sections are now watertight sections. So now I can take all these and merge them together and then Dynamesh one more time. And since I've reduced the amount of geometry islands, I should be able to achieve a single Dynameshed model. So to merge things together, you just need to go to the subtool palette. You need to come down here to the merge area. We're gonna do a merge visible on this. So it's gonna take everything I see on my screen here and merge them together. Now after this merge is created, it is going to create a new tool at the top. So I can select that one here. And here you can see the merged version of that. If I go back down to that polygroup area and open this up and do auto groups, it's gonna look at those geometry islands again. And you can see it has been greatly reduced from the original one. So each individual color is the geometry islands. Now I can go back to the Dynamesh area here and turn off blur. I can now do 2048 and Dynamesh. And now I have this result. So now I have one single geometry island. If I go down here and use auto groups one more time here. You see one single geometry island. This is now in Dynamesh mode. I have no shattering happening at all. And now I have a complete watertight model. So once again, to recap on the shattering, this is often caused by having a lot of geometry islands on your mesh before you Dynamesh. So to resolve this, what you can do is break your parts into individual subtools, Dynamesh those individual subtools, and then merge all those subtools together and Dynamesh one more time. And this should allow you to achieve watertight models that may consist of many, many parts. So I hope those two workflows help in alleviating the Dynamesh Swiss cheese and also Dynamesh shattering that you may run into. If you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.